There tends to be too much of an emphasis, I think, on modes in jazz education rather than function. And of course, you know, modes are incredibly useful. Like, you know, when modal jazz appeared, it was kind of a, a new way of thinking or at least a, a new way of sounding uh, at the time. But what that was reacting to was the actual like tonal harmony functional approach that the people before uh, modal jazz were using. So if you're thinking about modes, you're kind of stuck in this collection of notes, right? Let's say that like, I don't know, I want to play in E flat Phrygian, right? Okay, that, that's fun. I, it's fun to play in E-flat Phrygian, okay? But you're just kind of stuck. You're, you're stuck in E-flat Phrygian, right? If instead of thinking I'm in E-flat Phrygian, you think I'm gonna play around in the third degree of, of C-flat major. Okay, so instead of thinking about uh, E-flat Phrygian, let's think of D-sharp Phrygian. It's just easier to think about it that way. So instead of thinking I'm playing in D-sharp Phrygian, I'll think I'm going to explore the third degree of B major, okay? So we're in fact in B major, but I'm just going to spend time here. Then I can start thinking functionally. And instead of just being stuck in that collection of notes, for example, I could do a secondary dominant to, e, to D sharp Phrygian, right? So I could do um, like C sharp seven. So I'm here, right? D sharp Phrygian. Wasn't that nice to have a moment of something completely different? Let me make it a little, a little more extended so you can really hear it. So. Let's try a different one. Let's try uh, E7. Okay, so that, that's like the most simple example, but the, the deeper thing is that if I think I'm, I'm on the three of B major, then I could be exploring all the diatonic chords of B major without ever really leaving the place I'm in, right? So let's say, again, D sharp Phrygian. Then maybe I go. back to D sharp Phrygian. And so what I, all I did there was go up through the diatonic chords of B major, preceding each one with a diminished chord, with a, dimini with a, dim with a diminished secondary chord, right? So, so I went, you know, E flat minor to, a, to E major to, to, to F sharp major, and preceding each one of those with the secondary chord. And, and so, so like thinking of things functionally is just so much richer than thinking about these modes. I think the modes are, are, are really kind of a little bit of a dead end. I mean, you know, it can be a sound to limit yourself to that, but it's a lot richer thinking functionally. So to come back to your question, instead of thinking about these different minor modes, just think of it as I'm in the minor mode and, it, and within that mode, I have access to all these different colors.